What's up, Lucid Crew? It's your boy, Lucid Rob, and I'm here to steer this chaos chariot through the insane space opera we like to call existence. In today's adventure, we're not just hopping across the stars. No, we're diving headfirst into the black hole of human madness. This is where logic goes to die and conspiracy theories breed like rabbits. So slap on your tinfoil hats and clutch onto your sanity tight, because we're about to unravel the cosmic knot of the 2024 solar eclipse in a way that only the truly unhinged can imagine. Picture this. It's April 8th, 2024. A day like any other. Except for one minor detail. The sun decides to take a brief sabbatical, courtesy of the moon. A celestial dance choreographed by the cosmos itself, leading to the Earth's temporary abandonment by daylight. Tens of millions across North America will look up from their phones, awestruck as the day turns to night, sparking not just wonder, but a Pandora's box of conspiracy theories and doomsday predictions. And the buildup? <laughs> it's as intense as you might imagine. Hotels are booked solid. Paper glasses are selling like the latest Apple product and everyone's gearing up for the show. But beneath this excitement lies a deeper, darker current of speculation and fear. Because you see, while some of us are planning viewing parties and calling dibs on the best spots to take night mode Instagram selfies, there's a whole other party happening. A conspiracy party clad with black robes, giants, ancient serpents, and the potential destruction of the earth as we know it. Now kicking things off, we're going to start with the Path of Prophets, or as I like to call it, the Nineveh Narrative. This thing is crazy. Provoking an army of keyboard prophets armed to the teeth with Google Maps and an obsession with dusty old books just to cook up conspiracy theories so out of control it makes even the most seasoned conspiracy theorists take a double take. Now, the solar eclipse's path of totality. That's the track where the eclipse is total and the sun is completely covered. It happens to pass over a town's name, Nineveh. Yeah, you heard that right. Nineveh, as in the very same city that got a starring role in the book of Jonah in the Bible. You know, the town that was marked for destruction until they turned their act around. So these we'll just call them conspiracy aficionados, are convinced that this celestial event cruising over modern-day Nineveh is no coincidence. Instead, it's an omen, or some sort of divine billboard pointing to something monumental and potentially biblical. But, let's think this through for a minute. The path of totality for an eclipse is determined by the celestial mechanics. Basically, the orbits and alignments of the Earth, Moon, and Sun. And these aren't exactly influenced by our town naming conventions, right? So, unless the universe has Google Maps or a wicked sense of irony, it's hard to say how credible this theory really is. Now, digging a little deeper, we find that the Eclipse of Shadow will indeed grace the Earth in two towns named Nineveh. But, let's be real. If we're picking signs from the cosmos based on city names, why stop there? I mean, the Eclipse is also passing over towns with names that could just as easily be starring in their own prophecies. But no, Nineveh gets all the attention like the youngest sibling at a Christmas party because, of course it does. Because, in order for the conspiracy to work, it has to. And we can't forget... Ancient Nineveh was a bustling city known for its wicked ways until they decided to shape up and turn their act around, just narrowly dodging divine wrath. But the modern day Ninevehs and the Eclipse's path? Probably a bit more concerned with traffic jams and where to find the best non-Starbucks cold brew than they are bringing about our impending doom. So what's the takeaway here? Well, while it's fun to draw lines between celestial events and ancient prophecies, the reality is often less mystic and more astronomic. The universe operates on physics, not prophecy, and while the Eclipse passing on over Nineveh might make for a compelling story it's more than likely a cosmic coincidence than a sign of impending judgment named after a town in north america but you know i guess we won't know until it happens but hey don't let that stop you from enjoying to speculate whether you're in nineveh or nashville the upcoming eclipse is a reminder of the incredible world we live in it's governed by the laws of nature but it's still full of wonder so as with anything that we like to talk about on this channel take what i tell you with just as much skepticism as you would hearing it from anywhere else because like this eclipse is impending doom I'm not any more prophetic than the random internet articles I got this information from. Now, hold on to your tinfoil hats, because we're diving a little deeper into these cosmic conspiracies than I planned on doing when researching this stuff. And up next, on our celestial stroll through the conspiracy cosmos, we've got a theory that sounds a lot like a straight out of a fantasy novel. I'm talking about the intersection of the 2017 and the 2024 eclipse paths. A cosmic crossroads if there ever was one. Now, picture this. Two paths cross across the American heartland by the shadows of the moon. Seven years apart, intersecting at the seemingly random point over Missouri. But according to our intrepid conspiracy, this point is over St. Louis isn't just any spot. <laughs> no, because of course it's not. It's a veritable X marks the spot, a celestial sign of, wait for it, ancient giants. Now, I know what you're thinking. Giants? Really, Rob? You don't even believe in giants. Uh, to which I'll reply, don't at me, bro. Just stick with me here. The theory claims that this rare celestial alignment marked with the crossing of Eclipse Pass is a cosmic alarm clock set to awaken ancient giants from the long, peaceful slumber, buried deep beneath the Earth, right in the vicinity of St. Louis. Because honestly, what else is the Midwest good for if not flat farmland, dive bars, and you guessed it, celestial giants awakening from their eternal slumber. 
There's nothing else to do in the Midwest but sleep anyway, so I, I totally get it. Now you see, in the world of conspiracies, everything is connected. And symbolism is the key to everything we've found out since having this channel and going through all these videos. So, when we're presented with an X formed by the pass of two solar eclipses over the span of less than a decade, I mean, even I can admit that sounds pretty sus. It makes me think that it's not just a once in a lifetime show in the sky, but instead, you know, it might be a signal, a beacon, or an awakening of forces that we can only begin to imagine. But we have to ask ourselves, why giants? Why not unicorns? Why not dragons? Well, I mean, if you look back in history, giants have a storied place in mythologies worldwide across the span of, well, forever. They represent power and mystery and a link to an earthier primordial world. And what better way for the universe to send us a message than through a grand display in the heavens? Especially on a day when the life bringer in the sky is covered by a cold, dead satellite that's said to be a hollowed out artificial structure. I mean, it only makes sense. I mean, at least on this channel. Now, however, before you start prepping for a Jack and the Beanstalk scenario here, let's let's ground ourselves a minute. Let's, let's take a breath. Let's take a breath. Because the crossing of the Eclipse Pass is indeed a fascinating geometrical event, but it's also completely natural. And yes, the paths do cross over, and yes, it is happening right over St. Louis, which again, growing up in both Illinois and Indiana, I can't begin to understand why St. Louis would be its first choice. But I digress. Rather than signifying an ancient awakening, this rare event is a reminder of the incredible dynamic universe we're a part of, as a testament to the predictability and beauty of celestial mechanics. It's not necessarily a harbinger of mythological beings stirring from their slumber in an effort to awaken and eat or imprison or otherwise crush our lower level species under the heel of their massive earth shattering vengeance. <laughs> At least let's hope not. <laughs> Again, while it is fun to entertain these wild theories, the real magic isn't in the mythological creatures coming to life, but instead in our shared experience of the world and the wonder and curiosity as we look up in the sky in awe as two celestial giants join each other in a rare display of respect for each other's existence. Now, you guys know how I feel about giants, so giants aside, let's strap in because we're about to slice through some cosmic BS with precision of a NASA rocket. You know, NASA. That questionably moral, government-funded entity that no doubt always tells us the truth, always has our best interest in mind when researching events. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's talk about NASA's latest science party in the sky, dubbed APEP, named after an ancient Egyptian serpent god. Because obviously, when you're NASA, you don't just shoot rockets for science. You gotta sprinkle in some theatrical mythology just for kicks, right? And get us all going. Now, on April 8th, as the moon photobombs the sun and North America is throwing its after dark party at the height of the eclipse, NASA decided to join the party by launching not one, not two, but three rockets into the eclipse's shadow. And the goal? Well, Supposedly, they're just going to poke around Earth's upper atmosphere and see how it reacts when the sun plays hide-and-seek. Because, you know, that's a totally normal thing to do for them. And definitely just a coincidence that they would choose to do it during this specific solar eclipse, right? And I can already hear you asking, why the snake god reference? Is NASA trying to summon ancient deities or open another portal to hell and steal certain spotlight? Well, apparently this isn't a ritual at all. At least that's what they say. And it's just what they call hardcore science. Quoted directly from an article, hardcore science. It's stated that naming the project APEP is NASA's way of having a little fun with a mission that's actually about safeguarding our ultra-connected world from atmospheric tantrums. Because that's, that's, that's something to believe there. <laughs> and these rockets are armed to the teeth with gadgets that'll measure what happens when the Earth's personal light bulb in the sky gets temporarily switched off. And it's stating that it's crucial stuff because, believe it or not, our atmosphere gets a little moody when that happens. And this can affect everything from your grandma's AM radio to a high-tech satellite communications that allows the FBI guy in the van outside your house to read your Tinder messages. Nobody wants that. So maybe, you know, maybe it's a good thing. So, before you drive yourself crazy thinking NASA's gearing up for some mythological smackdown to summon some, some ancient deity, just remember this. It's all just about understanding the weird and wonderful ways that our planet reacts to sporadic cosmic events. I'm not sure if that's as much fun as believing a big conspiracy or that it's an even bigger cover-up, but, you know, that's what they're going with, so that's what I'm sharing with you. And I hope for our sake it's not anything nefarious and they're just researching because in a world where we rely on technology for pretty much everything, the real magic that's going to save us until it eventually destroys us is science. So, you know, fingers crossed on that one, guys. Now, let's talk about this large hydron collider. The behemoth of science that's apparently moonlighting as the universe's most ambitious portal to hell. Yes, you heard that right. And you probably this is probably isn't the first time. And while you thought it was just smashing particles, it was actually warming up to crack open a gateway to the underworld. Because apparently, when being at the forefront of physics, dabbling in the occult is a prerequisite to a job application. 
And here's where the plot thickens a bit with NASA. Not to be outdone, supposedly performing an ancient Egyptian ritual in the guise of launching sounding rockets. I mean, honestly, why settle for mundane scientific research when you can invoke Apep, the serpent god of chaos? And it appears that NASA has been reading too much in their mythology books, looking to spice up their eclipse party with a dash of divine intervention. But wait, there's an even twistier twist, believe it or not. You know Aleister Crowley, history's favorite bad boy of the occult? Well, he's allegedly the mastermind behind this entire cosmic conspiracy, because what's a world-altering event without a century-old Satanist pulling the strings from beyond the grave? I mean, might as well just throw it in the mix here. And let's not forget, he was said to have made contact with the demon on, you guessed it, April 8th. Now, if that's not a smoking gun, I don't know what is. Just out there, out there opening portals to hell, because that's that's what you do. That's what that's a smart thing to do, apparently. Okay, so all that being said, let's see if we can inject a little dose of reality into this conspiracy cocktail, just for kicks. Now, the Large Hydron Collider, while a marvel of human ingenuity, it sadly lacks the capability to summon demons or open portals to other dimensions. I know, I know, disappointing. It's almost as if its purpose is grounded in, dare I say, science? Now what about NASA? Well, those rockets are launching during the eclipse are about studying atmospheric changes, not paying homage to ancient deities. Shocking, I know. It turns out space agencies are more into exploring the universe than orchestrating rituals for the entertainment of us little old conspiracy theorists. Now, as for Crowley's grand demonic conspiracy aligning perfectly with the eclipse, well, it's a creative story, but last time I checked, scientific experiments weren't based on the whims of early 20th century occultists. It's strange, right? And now, for the main course, the Apocalypse Special. Now imagine you're sitting at home watching your favorite YouTuber. <clears throat> react to creepy TikToks when all of a sudden the power grids start failing, communication lines begin dropping, and chaos starts raining as the eclipse heralds the collapse of civilization as we know it. Just another Monday in the United States, so. <laughs> now, according to the finest tinfoil hat collectors out there, the upcoming solar eclipse isn't just a rare astronomical event. It's the universe's way of saying, oh, you thought 2020 was fun? Hold my beer. Power grid's failing, communication's going silent, and suddenly your biggest problem isn't the Wi-Fi password, but whether civilization as we know it are going to be thrown into unavoidable, endless darkness filled with uncontrollable madness and mayhem. And again, it's happening on a Monday because of course it would. But let's take a second pause for another reality check here, guys. I'm getting way too worked up. Now, as much as I love a good apocalypse story, this one's got more holes in it than my ex-fiance shared on her secret dating profile. It's, it's a lot. In case you were wondering, that's a lot. Now, first of all, solar eclipses, as mind-blowingly cool as they are, they don't have the power to kick our modern infrastructure in the nuts. Our power grids and comm lines aren't sitting there thinking, oh no, oh no, the sun's gone. Time to pack it up, boys. It's been real. Because you see, the whole idea that an eclipse, a perfectly natural and predictable cosmic event, could somehow trigger the end times is like believing my chances of winning the lottery increase if I wear my lucky condom. Sure, it's fun to think about, and it's, but it's not exactly how the world works. The truth is, our world is chaotic. It's an unpredictable mess. But it's also resilient. Civilization has survived wars, natural disasters, and yes, countless eclipses over the years, without descending into anarchy. The idea that a shadow on the moon passing overhead for a few minutes is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back isn't just unlikely. It's kind of insulting to our collective ability to handle adversity. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to sit here and act like there aren't other factors that I'm almost positive don't have our best interests and survival in mind. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that everything I've read to disprove these theories is true and written with honesty being the top priority. I'm a conspiracy realist just like you watching this. And I know for a fact that there are crazy, unreasonable, unpredictable, and sometimes even unacceptable things being done behind closed doors to keep us in the dark. And that it's important to bring attention to that fact so that we can arm ourselves with knowledge and resources we need to keep surviving and hopefully thriving through life as a collective species. But it's equally as important to play the devil's advocate and search for more grounded answers. Because any amount of one-sided info is just as bad as the other opposing side if all you're doing is looking for confirmation instead of the truth. So, when April 8th rolls around and you find yourself marveling at the eclipse, just remember, the world probably isn't ending. We're just witnessing one of the many wonders of our amazing universe has to offer. And hey, if the Wi-Fi does go out, maybe it's just a reminder to look up from our screens for once and connect with something even bigger than the internet. Now, I'll be the first to admit that even though I believe we should be positive and expect the best, we should also be realistic enough to simultaneously prepare for the worst. Because at the end of the day, we don't know what's going to happen. Until it happens. Take a second here. Just extend this video a little bit. After I had already written this and done all this, I was talking to a friend who was also very into conspiracy theories. And he said that the rockets could be a way to help Project Bluebeam. And that's something I didn't even consider when I was making this video. He said that years ago there was a former Men in Black that did an interview, like a, an anonymous interview, that said in 2024 there would be a big, huge staged event worldwide. In 2024, 
Uh, and what better time now, right? People are already outside. They're going to be looking up at the sky, at the eclipse. What better time than to spray some stuff in the air and, and shoot a uh, hologram out there so we think that the rapture is happening or something. So I don't know. But uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know if you liked this video. If you did, please, you know, do what you can to help out. Share, like, subscribe, everything, man. You guys are awesome. So until next time, Lucid Crew, peace.